afternoon. Welcome to our Google Plus Hangout here on LATimes.com this Saturday uh, afternoon, I guess it is now. I'm Shelby Grad, and we are here talking about the Space Shuttle Endeavor, which is continuing to make its way across the streets of Los Angeles. And it's really kind of entering, in just the last hour or so, the real challenge along the route, where the Space Shuttle is getting really close to buildings, really close to trees, and really, if we can kind of get through this stretch of the route, it appears it'll be clear sailing to the California Science Center. And we're here to join, to talk about these uh, latest moves with with uh, Matt Stevens, who's on the City Desk, and by Samantha Schaefer. Welcome, both of you. Thanks, Shelby. Okay, well, Matt, let's get to you now. We had a little bit of a drama a little while ago about this shuttle, but it seemed to be uh, a temporary drama. Tell us about it. Yes, this was uh, basically the first snag in the plan, but folks had, as I understand it, all along uh, believed that this problem at Crenshaw Drive could exist. Uh, we had stationed one of our reporters there because we knew that it was actually going to be very, very tight within inches of trees and apartments on both sides of the street. What basically happened is that the Space Shuttle Endeavor took a left turn off of Manchester onto Crenshaw Drive, and uh, as it got there, it was a sort of difficult turn that was navigated quite well. There, there were cheers that went up when it made the turn, but once it got there, it ran into another problem. We know that uh, much has been made by some South LA residents about trees that have been um, uprooted to sort of make way for this shuttle. Uh, one tree that remained there, uh, the stump of it happened to be sort of in the shuttle's way, and it took, uh, took a team of, of folks out there to sort of inspect the tree. They looked around, and from what our reporters in the field are saying, they, they realized that the left wing of the shuttle actually was going to be about a foot too long uh, if they proceeded as, as they went. So they had to do all sorts of things, maneuvering the wheels up and down. Um, eventually, our reporters are saying that they, they were able to navigate that stump. They actually had to cut uh, some low-hanging branches off of trees ahead to sort of make way. It was a short delay, um, only, only a couple minutes, but it was the first time that we saw um, all of this meticulous planning have sort of one little bump in the road. Okay. Well, now, earlier uh, today, we had the shuttle take a pit stop at the Forum, which is one of the major places where people were going to be allowed to come and look at the shuttle and were actually encouraged to congregate. It sounds like there was a pretty big showing there as well. Yes, you know, we, we started with hundreds, and, and then we adjusted, I think, as we were uh, writing up our post here to thousands. You could see on TV that folks were, folks were totally throughout the streets in that parking lot there at the Forum in Inglewood. Um, there were several fo several uh, attendees that addressed the crowd, a state senator uh, who told us basically a lot of civic pride was played on throughout the course of the day. Um, and folks were folks were really, really excited. You could hear in the background, you know, the, the chants of yes, yes, and, uh, you know, the, the enthusiasm to sort of have something to call their own here. Obviously, there's a long history with this shuttle. Uh, related to California, and this was an opportunity to really pause and uh, sort of have a moment of civic pride, I think. Okay. Well, you know, one of the things I think that we now know, kind of last night, kind of when a lot of us went to bed, the shuttle still had its most important maneuver to do. That was getting over the 405 freeway, getting through Crenshaw Drive, and of course the trees along MLK. And it sounds like if we can kind of get through the next few, next hour or so, we kind of have kind of uh, successfully navigated the things that they were most concerned about. Yeah, you know, uh, we were actually ahead of schedule this morning. Uh, you speak of the uh, the forum there, Shelby, and it, they actually arrived at the forum between 60 and 90 minutes early today. Uh, then they waited there so that they could they could have the uh, the presentation on time. But now we're, we're, we're thinking about whether or not we might be able to get this thing into the Space Center or, or to the Space Center by sundown. Uh, there are a couple more places it needs to go, but officials the entire time have sort of stressed that this little stretch on Crenshaw Drive was going to be the one that was going to be the tightest squeeze. And even though there was a little bit of a snag there, they're through that, so we may have smooth sailing, uh, knock on wood, the rest of the way. Okay. Well, Sam, let's turn to you. Uh, Sam has been curating the photos you guys are sending, has been curating uh, LA Times photography, and built some beautiful uh, things, including this amazing timeline, which I'll show you in a minute. But Sam, why don't we start with you? What are the latest photos we're getting in? Um, so we've been getting some more reader photos. Uh, let me just share my screen. 
And, um, well, this is our staff gallery. Uh, these are some photos at the Forum and at the Inglewood Park Cemetery. And um, lots of celebration going there, lots of people crowding around. And there are some pretty interesting shots with the shuttle with some big advertisements in the background, which is kind of funny. Um, but you can see there were just a ton of people there to see the shuttle there this morning. And some of the photos that our readers have been sending in are close-ups of the shuttle. Um, there, you know, there are kids in front of the shuttle, some, some funny shots with, uh, you know, a motel sign or some fans. Um, and readers have been sending these in on Twitter and Instagram by tweeting their photos at LA Times with the hashtag spot the shuttle or sending them on Instagram to LA Times photos with the hashtag spot the shuttle. That one above the motel photo is amazing. You see the shuttle in that big uh, 26 slide. Right. Thank you, and, Kristen Martin. <laughs> and um, like you said, we also have this timeline that we've been putting together, and it kind of just tracks the shuttle's progress through LA. We have these little maps here, so you can get a sense of where the shuttle is at about the time it's there. Um, and it links off to our blog posts and some of our photos. Um, so it's just kind of a different way to look at how the shuttle is moving throughout throughout LA. And I've noticed, Sam, just from my Twitter feed, it seems like really you're getting a lot of people, a lot of people with kids going out to catch the shuttle. I noticed Kate Mather, uh, noticed a few celebrities along the route, and um, it seems like Twitter really is kind of lighting up today with the whole Endeavor uh, sort of experience. Right, people are definitely excited. Uh, we're, we're getting a lot of great photos, so... I think people are having a good time out there. Okay. Well, Matt, let's get back to you. One of the questions that several people have tweeted out to us is, is there a way to find out where the shuttle is at any given point? And I know that we have a basic route and a basic timeline, but as you point out, Matt, it's ahead of schedule, and as we know just about a half hour ago, it had an unexpected delay. So it sounds like we, we know basically where it's going to be, but knowing exactly is kind of hard to find out. Right. I mean, the, the nice part is it's traveling at about two miles an hour, so and it's it's pretty big, so so it's hard to miss. Uh, it's not going very fast. You can probably catch up to it. Uh, I, I think one of the surprises today, in fact, is, is that I, I'm not sure that folks uh, expected to have this number of visitors and spectators out there um, in mass. And I know one of the things that officials have been concerned about is that there is a two two p.m. event. They're wondering, they're, there's only about space for about a thousand folks out there. Um, the question is going to be, okay, are we going to have too many? Uh, are we going to run out of space? Of course, uh, everyone knows where the shuttle is ultimately going, the California Space Center, and I'm sure we will have plenty of opportunities <laughs> to go view it there. It's, it's not going to go anywhere once it gets there. Yeah, but it's not quite the same seeing it in the science center as seeing it on a street corner. Right. right. Well, well some of our... Uh, our reporters yesterday, I think this made it into the print story, talked about how when it was in the sky, that was one thing. It was quite majestic. It was sort of there on that uh, on the back of that plane. And some of the observers that have been out there this morning have said that while it's still huge and, and massive and, and beautiful, you can see, you know, it's, it's sort of like a, a person without makeup or, uh, you know, HD channels now. You can see some of the dings and, and some of the wear and tear that the shuttle's undergone if you get up close to it um, and actually folks have been, folks, as we've seen with some of Sam's photos, people have gotten pretty close. Okay. Well, uh, Matt, thank you so much for uh, coming in and talking with us. Samantha, thank you as well. And we'll be back a little later in the afternoon once we get a better sense of uh, how the uh, shuttle is doing as it gets closer to the Science Center. And, of course, Matt was referring to that big event that's coming up at the Crenshaw Baldwin Hills Mall. And, of course, we'll have reporters there to check on things here on LATimes.com. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye, guys.